It went from kind of good to very bad. You know my name, Neon Noir, Neon Noir, on my road to fame. I am that coming for your spot. Neon Noir, Neon Noir, now let me show you what I got. I got. Hello, my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, a half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So, last week I did my first episode of Drag Race Mexico, and although it didn't get that many views, it did get a lot of likes. So, I figured, you know what, let me give you another episode and give you a second try for you to let me know if you want me to do more of these videos. So, it is time to play my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Mexico Season 2, Episode 4, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know which looks had the fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is Futuristic Folk Drag 5000 where the queens must mix traditional Mexican folklore with futuristic fashion to come up with a new, original, creative look. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Ava Blunt. And Ava Blunt is coming out with this staff and this hooded dress holding a mask. She goes on to explain that she's actually doing a play on Chiapas para Chios, which I actually didn't know what it was and had to Google it. Turns out that it is this sort of Mexican uh, dance where they wear these uh, masks that are done in the region of Chiapas. Without knowing that originally, I just assumed she was some sort of a Mexican healer or grower because it definitely had that Mexican sort of folklore look. And again, I am not the most versed in this topic. I am actually learning a lot watching Drag Race Mexico, so I kind of like really love that. But for me, as a North American tourist, uh, you definitely see a lot of those like statues and tchotchkes when you go to Mexico. I mean, I've been like twice, I think. And that's what it was giving me, but like super elegant and super regal. It definitely felt like a Mexican rakiki, you know, from The Lion King. But uh, this was done in a really well well. I love this cape and I love this staff. It gave you regalness. I love the makeup and the dress being plain kind of works because it gives you this plain backdrop to all of this color that's going on. I didn't really love the mask. I thought the mask felt very plain, but then looking at her inspiration, it makes sense because she's literally taking the mask and the face that they wear in that region for that dance. So it kind of makes sense. I wish she would have done this exact mask and maybe done all rhinestones and bedazzled just to drag it up a little bit and give it more of that next level flair. But all in all, this is a pretty good look and definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, it's Ava Pocket, and Ava Pocket is coming out with this brown coat and this brown hood. She unzips it to reveal this brown dress with this gold fringe and all the collars and necklaces on it. She's paired it with a red hair and sort of a goggles. She is giving you that little bit of that mix between futuristic and a little bit of steampunk. You can definitely see the references coming through. The issue I have is that she's definitely going uh, more futuristic, more imaginative. Mad Max uh, vibes. But what do we think of the look? Well, the look, I do think that it's got a lot of interesting pieces on it. I love this hair, this red hair that like all wiggling and everything that's going on on it is really cool. And it's that little bit of jolt that goes into the look that really makes it come alive. When it comes to the glasses that she got on her head, I get why she has them there. I actually don't have a problem with the glasses themselves because it does add that you know dystopian vibe to it. I just wish that she would have colored in the inside of the glass just so that you don't see her forehead through it. Had those just been like blackened out, I think it would have looked a lot more uh, sharper and a little bit more positive. Poppier. Then we get into the outfit itself. I do like the little gold and I do love the necklaces. It really adds character to it. I think that the actual outfit is a cool shape, but I don't know which material it is made out of, but it's definitely not reading expensive on the runway. It feels like it's flimsy while this should necessarily be a little bit more leather-esque. And so I wish she would have used a leather material or had leather been too expensive that she would have just distressed this whole outfit a lot more to give you more more of that little bit of that grunge vibe. Right now it's, it's that weird in-between between 
Is it polished and not really well polished or is it distressed? And I don't really know what's going on, but to tell the story, I definitely think it needs to be distressed. The other thing that would have helped a little bit is her makeup. This is not the best makeup I've seen. She's pretty good with makeup usually, and actually most of the queens are, but this one feels very washed out and very pale and doesn't really allow for the contrast. I think she needed a bolder lip and a much sharper eye, and I think that would have really helped bring the character. Overall, I think she had a great idea, but definitely lost it a little bit in execution. And because the execution isn't at that top-notch level, I'm going to go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Horacio Potasio, and Horacio Potasio is coming out in this black wig and this heritage Mexican dress with all the eyeballs on it. She's got her face painted white, and she's got all the creepy look. And she decided that her future is filled with zombies. That is right, it's zombie season, bitches. She is coming out wearing this classic... Uh, Topatio, I believe it is called. It is like this her this classic heritage Mexican dress that you probably seen all over the place because it is so typical. But she's done it with these eyeballs to make it like super creepy, super futuristic and like next level, but keeping the culture into it. She did a really good job at creating this character because you understood it in three seconds. In terms of fashion, I think it's really smart to go with this dress just because it is something that is referential to most people even those of us who are not a huge knowledge of mexico we know this dress so she's playing it up all in all is a pretty good look but more importantly it's a great idea and that's why she is getting a pop. Next up, it's Luna Landsman, and Luna Landsman is coming out in this multicolored little bodysuit that is frilled around the edges with this a little hat. She comes out and she is definitely giving you a little bit more of that floral essence. At least that's what I originally thought. And then I started looking at it more and, I, and then I started thinking, oh, maybe it's actually like the ruffles of the traditional uh, Mexican uh, dress, but just like fanned out. I don't know which one of the two it is, but whatever it is, I love it. I think that this works really well because it's really bright and really colorful, but it also takes this traditional garment and this traditional dress and makes it a little bit more modern and avant-garde and takes it to the next level. When she thinks about future, this is not future as in 500,000 years from now. This is future as in like, this could be on the runways of tomorrow. This is taking what we know of the culture and spinning it on his head and making it a little bit draggy. I think the colors pop, it definitely makes a statement on the runway and ultimately it looks good on her. All in all, I think this is very well done and definitely gonna be a pop. Next up, it's Suculente, and Suculente comes out with her head down, wearing this sort of a cowboy hat and this cowboy-inspired uh, look. As you look closely, you realize that the hat is actually not a hat, but a hat made out of hair. Yeah. Now I'm thinking, oh, this is really cool. A hat made out of hair? I haven't seen this. I think this is really interesting. She lifts up her hat to reveal a bald head and some wires popping out because she is not a person. She is in fact a robot. When she comes out originally with this jacket and this hat, I actually really enjoy it. I think that this is a quite a fun little story that's happening. As she takes the hat and jacket off, I think that's where it starts to go downhill. I don't mind a bald look and I actually think a bald look works for a sort of futuristic robot look uh, but if you're gonna do that you really have to take it up a notch this bald head doesn't really do much I wish she would have painted herself all in silver to really give you that like robot-esque of vibes but right now this skin color just isn't working on top of it when she turns around her bald head she didn't paint the back of her head which makes it look like a mistake more than what it was done on purpose then we get into the outfit and the outfit's got these wires sticking out which again I think is a great idea but not executed really well it really feels like they were just thrown on there I think had this whole dress been made with micro chips and little wires coming out of it and she would have painted herself silver I think that would have worked I think the outside garment works. I don't think anything of the inside garment will work. I always say if you're going to do a reveal, the inside reveal should be better than the outside reveal. And in this case, it was not. It was very much the opposite. It went from kind of good to very bad. And that is why she is getting a drab. Yeah.
Next up is Electra, and Electra is coming out wearing this patterned dress with these long feathers sticking out of it, and she's got feathers all around her bust. She's paired it with this yellow and black hair with just one feather in it. She said that she's channeling a Mexican dress, and honestly, you got that right away. I felt the Mexican dress vibe. It's also got a little bit of that colorful bird parrot vibes coming out of it, which I really like. This feels like a more of a modern fashion interpretation of a um, traditional Mexican style. So I don't know if it necessarily feels futuristic, but it definitely feels modern. This more feels like something that would come off of a runway today or even tomorrow. And so I guess her future is literally the future that is now. I think this is very beautiful. I just don't know how much it really goes to the theme, but I always say if you're not gonna follow the theme, you better look good doing it. And here she definitely does. It looks expensive. It looks put together and every little detail is on this dress. All in all, this is really fabulous and definitely going to be a bow. Next up is Alexa Fox and Alexa Fox is coming out with this little cowboy hat and this little bolero wearing this jumpsuit. She rips off her little bolero to reveal that her arms have all of the fringe and this yellow rhinestone belt. She's definitely giving you those little cowboy vibes and she says she is channeling the northwestern part of Mexico. When she comes out, I immediately think, ooh, beige and brown. These are not t colors that we typically see on the runway because most queens like to go really bright and really over the top which actually works really well so somebody coming in with a brown is always a little bit questionable but this one just works it's got different shades of brown so it's got this like a little bit of a beigey color a little bit of a brown and the yellow so all the contrasting colors are really pop on top of it she's decided to do this in these various materials where she's got the rhinestones and the sort of like leather pleather look and the hat so the so the textures also play off of each other which also helps it to make it work. It's definitely giving me sort of a little bit of that Beyonce vibes. But uh, as a drag queen, we always reference our pop divas. I think this one really works. It is not the most crazy, most out of the box uh, dress. Overall, it just looks very well put together and very clean. Now, there is a couple of things I would change personally. Uh, I love this belt with the rhinestones on it. I wish there was more of that. I wish she would have taken the rhinestones up to the hat and also onto the boot to just give you a little bit more of that uh, but that's about it. Everything else on the garment looks super clean. And because it is so clean and so well done and showing us how simple does work, I am going to go ahead and give her a bow. Next up is Yasun, and Yasun is coming out wearing this brown hooded dress coat thing with these frilled detailing and these sort of ripped arm bands. She said that she is giving you post-apocalyptic priestess who is losing her sight. I've definitely got the priestess and post-apocalyptic vibe because it definitely gave me more of a Dune fantasy, but then taking it a little bit more focused glory and Mexican. So it's like if Mexico and Dune had a baby. I love these ripped pieces on her arms because it definitely feels a little bit more destructed and I wish I would have seen a little bit more of that on the dress. I think that the dress is definitely giving me a little bit of also Pocahontas vibes, which I am not sure. I think this would have really helped by having the whole gown distressed and dirtied a little bit more just to give you a little bit more of that grunge a vibe. That being said, this is a pretty cool concept and uh, executed at a pretty good level and therefore get a bow. Next up, it's Unique, and Unique is coming out wearing all of the colors. She's got this neon hair with this cross on it, She's got this big pink colored uh, shoulder pads, this green shirt, this orange body with these orange pants, and these sort of dress tails with flowers on them coming off of her buttocks. Immediately, I love the color. I love when people push color. That's one of the things I love about Mexico and Mexican art, for example. She does say that she is channeling hu Huichol, which is like this traditional uh, Mexican art style, as far as I know, and it's definitely giving uh, that. But let's get into this look. 
I love this hair. I think that it's really smart to take this hair up and give you some height to it. I also love all the colors in it. I think this is working really well. And then she got these shoulder pads, which also makes sense with the hair. When you do big shoulder pads and big things around your face, you definitely need taller hair. I hate when people wear sort of long hair that interfere with the shoulder pads. So that makes total sense. Then as we go down the body, it starts to lose itself a little bit. The green shirt is just the green shirt. I wish that she had done something to it, maybe added some of those patterns onto it to really bring you that art style up to the top. Uh, right now, it's just feeling a very horizontal and cutting her off in a weird section. Then she's done this sort of orange corset, but I think that the corset is like either not tight enough or her breasts are not big enough because this whole outfit is making her body shape a little bit odd. It's not giving you that sort of hourglass look and personally I'm okay with uh, people doing more of a sort of androgynous look but I think this one would have really helped with some really uh, strict corseting because there's so much going on you gotta give me body somewhere then she decided to pair this with pants and pants on a dry queen is always very very difficult because it does sometimes tend to go a little bit uh, boyish um, and in this case, it's definitely giving me MC Hammer vibes. I think this would have really helped a lot had this been a simple dress or a simple skirt instead of pants. All in all, I think it works from the shoulders up, and I mean the shoulder pieces, the beautiful makeup with all the colors in it, and the headpiece, but everything from the shoulders down is definitely not working for me. Valiant effort, but poorly executed, and definitely gonna go ahead and give this one a drab. <laughs> Next up is Genetary Bloom, and Genetary is, is coming out wearing the biggest costume. She's got these giant shoulder pieces, she's got these giant hip pieces uh, that has all got this really big pattern on it. Her chest has got like these feathers and florals on it. She's paired it with braided hair. She goes on to explain that she is channeling Huichiol art, and girl, this is how you do it. This is what Unique was trying to do, but failed to do. Especially seeing them one after each other, you definitely got it. I love this costume. This costume looked very expensive, but very well done. It definitely feels like an art piece and something that you would see on a fashion show, or definitely something that you would see an artisan want to make and to show off their talent. I love the size of the costume, which is a little bit shorter, so she's got a lot of legs to sort of counterbalance everything that's going on. She's paired it with taller hair, so again, the hair doesn't interfere with the outfit, and she decided to go with darker hair to, I guess, not interfere with the outfit, which I actually don't mind. Personally, I would have said I think I would have been cuter in pink, but I actually don't mind this outfit. And then we get into her makeup, and she definitely played it up with the makeup. This goes to show you what you can do with simple things like makeup and styling to take an outfit from good to amazing. But honestly, this was amazing from the get-go. All in all, this is amazing, as I've said three times now, and definitely going to be a bow. And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think? First off, I really like this theme. I love this reinterpretation of a traditional. I had to do a lot of Googling to figure out what some of these things were. So it was also a learning lesson for me. I wish some other franchise countries would do some sort of theme like this. All in all, I'm kind of really enjoying Drag Race Mexico. This is like the second episode I'm watching of Drag Race Mexico. And you know what? I'm really enjoying it. So let me know if you're enjoying it by leaving a comment down below but enough about that and let's get into the reason why you guys are here you guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week well my drab of the week this week goes to Suculente. honestly this was just a drab i think it had potential at the beginning uh, but that robot was not roboting. It definitely was not giving it um, and ultimately was definitely the drab of the week. But enough about the negative. Uh, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week goes to... January Bloom! Girl, I am so excited when this came out, my jaw just dropped, this was the moment. Although this is not what I was expecting and this is what I wanted. It was just simply amazing. Congratulations. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my comments? Let me know in the comments below who you thought had the fab and drab of the week. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos.
拜拜。